What's up, YouTube family? Uh, back again for another video, number two here. Um, we're gonna title this one Seco, calories in, calories out. So one of the questions that I get more than anything else is um, what's the best diet for me? Um, and really the answer to that varies from person to person. The best diet for you is the one that you can adhere to. Um, you know, for some people that may be carnivore, for some people that may be keto, for some people that may be intermittent fasting. You know, it kind of depends on what your goals are and what feels easiest to you. Um, and every diet, of course, has some of its pros and cons. But at the end of the day, all diets that work do the same thing. They put you in a calorie deficit, meaning that you burn more calories than you take in. Because fat loss is a very simple formula at its core. You have to burn more calories than you take in. And you can do this by either moving more or eating less. There's many techniques to arrive at this. Some people love intermittent fasting. You know, that they're, they'll, they'll shrink their feeding window down so far that they're able to, you know, they're not able to overeat within that given period of time. And they're able to, to wait until later in the day to eat that one time meal. Now me, as a bodybuilder, I don't like intermittent fasting because I miss opportunities for protein synthesis. Um, as far as keto goes, this is a very successful diet for many people as well. Once again, for me, because I work out, because I do lots of cardio, I like carbs. I don't like the carb fog. I don't like that uh, the way I feel. Um, but some people, this is this works great for them. So I say to you, the best diet for you is the one that you can adhere to. You know, the one that you can do for life. Me, I like a little bit of you know a balance. You know, I believe that we are made to eat all different food groups and that you should have a little bit of everything in there. You should have some carbs, you should have some protein, and you should have some fats. You know, fats, of course, have nine calories per gram, where carbs and protein only have four. So, of course, it's easier to limit fats because if you eat less of them, of course, you're able to eat more volume of food. But you can't go with no fat. I mean, you can, but fats have value. They, they help regulate your hormones. And they also, there's a lot of uh, fat-soluble vitamins that, that can only be digested and dispersed throughout the body by having fat in your diet. Um, and as I said before, with carbs, you know, carbs fuel workouts. For me, I feel best in a workout session when I have carbs in me. Also, um, carbs are stored in your muscles in the form of glycogen and they carry with them water and you know a lot of times you'll have you'll hear bodybuilders talk about that flat look and that's because the glycogen is depleted and with it the water and that's part of your muscle composition leaving you feeling flat or looking flat um, so for me I like to simply just go straight to the core and restrict the calories now that's what works best for me for me, I like to move a little more and eat a little less, you know? So for me, I like to do a little bit of both. When I go to get in a calorie deficit, you know, I add cardio and I subtract calories and I find a balance that feels good for me where I'm still able to get good workouts and at the same time, keep the scale moving. Cause at the end of the day, if the scale's not moving, it's not really a diet. It's not, you're not in a deficit. So, um, Seco is the core of everything. If you're losing weight, if you're losing fat, if you are losing body fat, it's because you're in a calorie deficit. Whether it be from fasting, whether it be from you know restricting your carbs, whether it be from restricting fat, whether it be because you're increasing your cardio, it is because you're in a calorie deficit. Now for me, I find the easiest way to track a calorie deficit by tracking everything that goes into my body and then keeping a consistent amount of some sort of cardio and then tracking steps. For a lot of people, they're able to just increase their step count and lose weight because if you go from 5,000 to say 15,000 steps a day, that's going to you know, create an extra calorie burn that can lead to a deficit. If you're eating the same amount of food and then you're moving more, you're in a calorie deficit. So. For me, what I did is I just simply found what my maintenance was, 
meaning that I tracked and weighed and figured out what I was eating and tracked my weight and it stayed the same. So I figured out what my maintenance calories were. And then I simply subtracted a, 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 a number of calories from that. You know, uh, I suggest not really losing more than maybe say a pound a week to start with. You can lose more than that, but then it's, it's harder to maintain such a weight loss. Um, so for me, you know, I usually start with a couple hundred calories a day. Um, and then as things progress, your, your actually, your metabolism will adapt to that and you'll have to either move more or continue to eat less. Uh, also diet breaks are helpful in, um, continuing the weight loss because eventually your, as your metabolism catches up, you know, weight loss isn't linear. You can't continue to just keep losing weight by doing the same thing over and over with time. So for me, even as I lost the weight, I would lose the weight and then I would take a break. I would find maintenance again, which was lower than it was when I started and then slowly add calories back, reverse dieting back to where I had a healthier maintenance level. And then I had something to cut from again, you know, a calorie surplus in order to cut from again and continue the weight loss. And there's also uh, um, carb cycling, which is where you will, you know, cut carbs from your diet. And as your glycogen gets depleted throughout the week, then you will have a couple of days usually two days in a row for as what I found has worked best for me two days in a row have a higher carb day and replenish your glycogen stores refuel your you know your body's ability to burn calories and go back to going back into a deficit again so at the end of the day just find what works for you and remember that uh, you know that you need to find something that works for you for life if you're not going to be able to do keto for life or if you're not going to be able to transfer from keto into some other form of you know calorie restriction or be comfortable in a maintenance if you're going to go right back to your old heating habits then it's not going to work you know you're going to yo-yo diet as they say which is where you lose the weight you put it back on you lose the weight you put it back on or you lose the weight and put more back on than you had in the first place so find something that works for you. Find something that you're comfortable with for life. What I found that works for me is to track my calories and to, by tracking the calories, I'm able to live this lifestyle for the last several years in a row. Um, anyway, uh, if you like the video, like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, comment for the algorithm. Much love. See y'all soon.